Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and welcome to a new video series on making games with Twine. In this video, we'll be diving deep into the Twine engine, and you'll be learning how to create a complete game from scratch, even if you have no Twine experience, game development or experience, or even coding experience. I plan to cover it all. Now, if you like the series and these videos, do me the pleasure of both liking and subscribing as it helps the channel grow so more people can watch these videos. Now, before I go any further, let me just introduce myself. Like I said, I am Vegetarian Zombie, and I run this YouTube channel that focuses on Let's Plays, game development tutorials, and live streams. A few years ago, I made a tutorial series on Twine that was well-received, but it was a little bit verbose. Hopefully, this update will improve on it. When I'm not working on the channel or working at my job, you can find me over at my Discord for the Vegetarian Zombie community. Feel free to swing on by if you have any questions, if you'd like to share your work, or if you'd just like to chat. I give away a free game every week, and soon I'll start hosting Interactive Fiction Game Jam, so I'd love to see you in the Discord. Just follow the link, and it will get you all set up. It's free to create a Discord account, and it's a great way to meet other members of the community. Well, with that said, let's get on with the show. I called this course Beginning Game Development with Twine because Twine makes for an excellent on-ramp into game development when you have no experience. While professional game engines like Unity and Unreal are freely available, they come with steep learning requirements before you can even be proficient. They require you to understand a programming language like C Sharp or C++. You need to have an understanding of 3D modeling and have a good grasp of linear algebra. They also require you to develop your own assets and other professional-based programs. This means the process of producing a game, no matter how simple, requires a serious investment of time and energy. With Twine, you just need to watch a few videos, have a good idea for a concept, and write your game. You don't even need to know how to code. Granted, coding can give depth to your game, but if you have a compelling idea, you can put it together with a minimum of fuss. Okay, so what is Twine? Well, in essence, it's an engine that allows you to develop CYOA games, that is, choose your own adventure games. These are games where the player reads messages and a story unfolds based on their choices. The engine is built using web technologies, such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you can utilize them to create visual experiences for your audiences. But even without these tools, you can still write compelling adventures using just the stock tools. At a minimum, you can create a branching story for your users, but Twine gives you the ability to customize your game via code. You'll be able to create an inventory, design a combat system, and even include saving and loading in your game. The default language is designed for the non-coder, so you can leverage these features and more without getting wrapped up in an arcane syntax. What I really like about Twine is that if you decide to dive deeper into Twine and learn about the technologies such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can leverage them to make your game really pop. And these skills you can use anywhere. Okay, so what is this series going to cover? Well, I'm glad you asked. In this series, we'll be making a game called Bernie's Revenge. In it, you play a Boy Scout trying to escape his Boy Scout camp that has been terrorized by the camp cook, Bernie. As the lone surviving scout, you have to find Bernie's chili recipe to bring it to the police and escape. All the while, Bernie will be chasing you. If he catches you, you'll be forced to try his chili, which ends the game and your digestion. The game features a traversable area with Bernie always moving. There are items that can be found and picked up. On easy mode, the items are in the same place, but on hard mode, the items are scattered throughout the game world. Some locations are only traversable with certain items. The game will also feature saving and loading, a randomized player experience, and hopefully, a feeling of dread. You'll learn how to code this game using the default story format called Harlow. And then I'll show you how to build the same program using the Sugarcube format. At the very end of this course, I'll introduce you to itch.io and IFDB, where you can post your games. This course will focus on the code-centric side of things. It will not focus on using HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, although it may touch on that from time to time. Basically, we'll be building our game using the stock look and feel. You can create your own appearance, but again, that's beyond the scope of what I'm trying to offer. If you are interested in such a course, please let me know in the comments. And when we wrap this one up, we can circle back and see if it's worth doing. As you can see, there's a lot to cover. So let's dive in by taking a look at Twine. 
Okay, to get started, we need to install Twine. And a good place to do that is through by going to the website twinery.org. And you can see I have it open here. And it gives us not only the application to install Twine, but also a lot of information such as documentation and so forth. So you can see here we have it right here. It gives you a little information. This little blurb here gives you information about what it does. And you can see the download section is on the right here. We have the Windows 32-bit binary, Mac OS, uh, Linux, and so forth. You can also use it online. And when you do use it online, it saves your stories in the browser's local storage. Now, I really don't recommend using the browser's storage to save your files. Every time you use Twine, what you should do is load your file into it and then save it out when you're done with it. That way there's no data loss. If, for instance, you decide to clear out your browser storage for any reason or there needs to be a reinstall or so forth, you won't lose your stories. Now you can see down here as we scroll down here, we have the Q&A, the Discord here. The Discord is great to get information and you can chat with other people and you can see some stories you can play with as well. I'm going to scroll back up here. Now one thing I really recommend is checking out the cookbook and I have a link right here. And this cookbook gives you tons of information. And this has been put together by some of the experts in the community. So once you get your head wrapped around twine, I highly suggest coming here. You'll get recipes for, say, rolling dice or for creating an inventory system. But you'll also get hints and documentation on how to work with, say, things like arrays or things like images and so forth. So this is a great resource when you're working with Twine. And this is an ongoing project, so it will continue to improve over time. So definitely, if there's something you're looking for that isn't here, you can always come back here in a month from now, and they may add something to it. So definitely check that out. OK, now I already have Twine installed on my computer. If you don't have yours installed, again, just download the Windows installer. If you're on Windows, install it, and then you should be up and running. So here is the program running on my machine right here. I'm going to expand this. I'm recording this on a Mac right now, and I switched over to the dark mode because I just it goes along well with the, the latest Mojave update. But if you install it, you're probably going to see something like this. This is light mode, and you can see down here you can switch between the two. I'm not too sure if that does that for the Windows version, but I really like it for the Mac version. Now you can see here, these are my current stories. I have Wrath of Bernie, Wrath of Bernie 2, and Test. These are just things I've been playing around with. What we want to do is create a new story. Now, if you're watching along, I want you to follow along with me. And that's the best way that you can learn this stuff is by doing it. Now, watching it, you may pick up some parts and get a feel for it. But ultimately, it's actually doing it, typing in the code yourself that really will level up your skills. So let's do this now. So definitely follow along with me. So here we have our stories open. I want to create a new story. So I can just press this green button here. And let's call our story Re Bernie's Revenge. And we'll click Add. And right away, it loads up our working environment. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that the working environment looks completely different from earlier versions of Twine. And this may be the case going forward. But for now, it should work pretty much the same in future versions. OK, if you want to get back, you can see we have this Home button here. So we can just click that. And now we're back to our stories. So let's go back to Bernie's Revenge here. Now, I'm not going to walk you through every single button in the interface. You, as you go through this tutorial series, you're going to understand them. And you'll use them and learn them in context. But starting off, I want to show you the most important things. So we can click this Bernie's Revenge. You can see an arrow here. And if you click this, you can see we have all these various different options. You could ignore Edit Story JavaScript and Edit Style Sheet. Now, the most important choice you'll make when creating any story is the story format. So you can see up here, we have this change story format. So let's click this. Now you'll see right away, we have various different story formats. We have Harlow 2, Harlow 1.24 as the default, Snowman, Sugar Cube, and an earlier version of Sugar Cube. So what is a story format? Well, you can see up here, it says a story format controls the appearance and behavior of your story, story during play. So this means when you select a story format, your story will look different according to that story format. But that's the least important thing about selecting a story format. The most important part is the behavior of your story format. Essentially, these story formats determine how you can code 
your Twine story. Now, I'll get into this in a later video. Just know that the story format determines the code. And if you start writing your code in a story format like Harlow 1.2.4, it's not going to run in Snowman. In fact, you'll need to completely rewrite your story format for Snowman. So the most important choice you make is your story format, and you always make this at the beginning. Now, this course is going to be on Harlow 2, so you can see we have Harlow 2.10. So we're going to select that as our default story format. Now, a lot of the features in Harlow 2 will not work in Harlow 1. So if you're following along with Harlow 1, at some point it's going to break. So, okay, so now that we have our story format set up, let's close this. And wow, look at that. It Everything looks exactly the same. Well, you can see here we have a passage already created for us. And a passage, you can think of it as a block. A passage really doesn't mean anything. It's really the meaning you assign to it. A passage can be, say, a room in a map or it could be a thought, it could be a sentence, it could be a paragraph, it could be a long flowing blob of text. The passage is the meaning you assign it. Passages could also be code related. For instance, if you want to do specific bits of code, you can do it in a passage. So you can see a passage is the meaning you assign to it. Now, I'm not trying to be Zen here. So when you create your story, you're going to be creating lots and lots of passages, and ultimately you're going to need to assign them your own meaning. So in our story, we're going to have lots of different passages, and they're just going to re represent places. For instance, a porch, or a car, or a side of the road. So let's do this now. We have this untitled passage, and let's double click it there, and you can see it opens up this editor here. For the name, we'll call this road. And then we can just write a little bit of text here. Okay. Now I've added a little description and you can see here we have it already up ready to go. Now I can double click this and you can see it opens up again. And if I wanted to, I can add some tags as well and we can close it here. And you can see when we mouse over, we have some options. We can delete it. We can edit it and see so you by clicking that it's the same as double clicking. We can hit this play button, which will start the story exactly here. And that's really good for testing as well. And we have these additional options as well if we want to customize how we want things to work. Now, you'll notice that we have this green icon here. This indicates this is the starting point of the, our story. Let's create another passage. And there are a few ways we can do that. The first way is we can create this plus sign to create a passage here. And when we do that, there's no relation to the other passage. Well, I want to create a relation here. So let's take this, select, have this selected, and let's delete it. And you can see here, we could, we're going to permanently delete this. If we hold shift, we can skip this message. So here I'm holding shift now. I'm just going to hit the delete like so. I'm going to double click on here, and I'm going to add another bit of text. I'm going to write a large tree hangs over the road. Now I want the player to be able to go over to the tree. So what I can do is just put these brackets around the tree. And you can see they change color. Now when I close this passage, you can see here, we now have a connection between the tree and the road. And it's a one way connection because this arrow goes one way. If we come here, there's no way to get back to that road. I'm going to add another bit of text here. So here I set, so here I have the tree is large and menacing. And let's come back here and add a link back to our road. Now what we want to do is let's put some brackets around our road and it created us a new road. And why is that? Well, that's because we were pointing towards a, a lowercase road, and this is an uppercase road. So let's come back over here, and let's capitalize this. And you can see we got this little completion help. And when we close this up, now this new passage is orphaned, and we have our double arrows, indicating that we have a way to traverse between both those passages. For this one, I'm going to just going to hold down shift and delete this. Now let's run. Now let's play our game. Here we have the name Bernie's Revenge. 
A long dusty road winds into the darkness. We have a large tree hangs over the road and when we click on tree, the tree is large and menacing. You know, and you'll notice we have this undo button here and this allows us to go back. Then you can see, you see a road nearby. So we can click that and we're back. Okay, now you may not want this road to be capitalized. Yet, when we close this, we wanna go back to this passage. We can point a link to a specific passage. So what we can do is lowercase this here. And what I'm gonna do now is add a pipe character. This pipe character is above my return key on the Mac. So I'm just holding shift pipe. And now I'm just gonna add my capitalized road. What this does is it replaces this text with road and it points towards the road passage. So let's run this again. We're gonna choose a tree and you can see now the road is lowercase, but we go back to our first passage. To further illustrate this, we'll call this, you see a dusty road. So now I'm adding a little bit more description about my road, but I'm having this go back to the road passage. And if we run, and actually better, we can select this and we can start our game here. Start story here. And you can see our icon has moved. Now we'll play. And now you can see a dusty road nearby. And if we click on this, and now we go back to our original start passage. Now at this point, you have all the tools necessary to create your own choose your own adventure story. It's really easy to do, as you can see. You can go to the library, get one of the old Choose Your Own Adventure books, come home, and literally transcribe it into Twine, and you would have a working game. But Twine adds so much more. And we'll be exploring that in this video tutorial series. Okay, now before we close this tutorial, when you're done with your story, you need to save it. And the way you do that is you can come down to this actually to the story title here, you'll click this up arrow and you'll see publish to file. So you simply click that file and it's gonna open up your file and then you can you can save it here. As you can see here, I'm saving Wrath of Bernie two and three and it saves it as an HTML document. And when you wanna read it in, you just simply open this back up again and then you go to, actually it's not here, you'll go back, I believe it's to your story location here and you go import from file. You click that, you navigate to where your file is located and that will load your file back in. In that way, you don't have to worry about your browser crashing or you losing information, or even if you're switching between computers, you will always have a hard copy of your story on hand. So that's a good thing to know when working with Twine. Okay, if you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. And of course, if you wanna see more of these videos, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell that will give you notifications about when I add new content. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that my channel, I produce all sorts of things. I do Let's Plays, live streams, and so forth. But I will be producing these Twine videos in a regular occurrence. Now, if you have any questions about this, make sure to stop by my Discord and feel free to ping me there and we can work through any problems that you're having. Or you can leave a comment here and I'll do my best to answer it in a timely fashion. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.